This is D, and this is the Come Up Straight Up. This is Dee, welcome back to my channel, and if you are new to my channel, welcome. Well guys, I am back, back, back with a new video. Um, a video, of course, focused for uh, women over 40 who is uh, who are seeking hypergamy. So um, the topic of this video, you guys, is soul ties. And I um, had a live uh, chat today, a YouTube live, and you guys be sure to join me for those because we have so much fun. And this topic came up, and I asked the ladies if they would, you know, want me to speak on this, and they unanimously said yes. And this is a topic that um, I don't know I have some experience in, and I'm going to also also offer like some advice. So before I get into it, please, please, please do not forget to subscribe. You guys subscribe to this channel as well as my other channel pretty and things and you guys turn on notifications for both channels so you are aware whenever I upload a great new video just like this one so let's get into it what is a soul tie how do you define a soul tie in basic terms and for me a soul tie is simply an emotional connection for whatever reason it is that you have formed some sort of emotional connection with this person. Now, it, you could have this with a number of people. Um, at least some people do. At least I, I can't say one size fits all because I don't, I don't feel I have. That's why I know I have a soul connection with this person. Okay, so honey, let me get into it. If I if I uh, look down from time to time, you guys, um, it's because I took I took notes and that because I don't want to leave anything out. So let me get into my specific example of a soul type. I dated this guy kind of off and on now for about five years. And this is a person who I met um, via, I met him during a, it was co-ed softball. We were on the same co-ed softball team. And then we ended up working at the same company, briefly. Um, and um, because of the, uh, because I was consulting at this company and he happened to be on the same floor and was like, oh my gosh, I know you from softball. And we just immediately, you know, you know, kind of hit it off and um, he asked me how we went on dates and it was just we just clicked we just clicked and this guy is a white guy and he is you know, good looking he works out he's you know the kind of the bodybuilder type um, comes from a good family has his own really nice home in a really nice area and really nice you know town um, nice cars he is what I would consider with what you would consider a high value man. He is one of those men who um, I would say, you know, looks good on paper. I, I mean, he is not a cheater. He is not abusive. He is not an angry person. He is none of those things. So if he is all of those wonderful things, why aren't you with him? Okay, let me get into that. Every time we sort of broke up, I broke up with him. And the reason I broke up with him was because he's, he's a great guy. He's a fun guy. He, you know, would shower me with everything. We'd go out to dinner. We'd do things. He enjoyed just, you know, having fun, which is great. But I knew that even though he loved me and he, like, still does and he, you know, absolutely adores me, I just knew that it would not be anything beyond that. Like, I could have been with him for 10 years and it would just be, we would be having fun, enjoying ourselves and doing anything else, and doing everything else. But I just knew that it would never go beyond that. Not because he didn't love me, but because, I mean, I think that he was, I think he's a person who had been hurt in the past and that made him, somewhat emotionally unavailable. I mean, he was, but, and he opened up to me more than he'd opened up to anyone. He told me that because he felt the most comfortable with me um, more than any woman. And that, again, created the, uh, the soul tie for him. 
but I just think people are who they are and whatever limitations they have because of whatever you know scar tissue they have from the past, they either get, get past it or they don't. Now, a red flag that I, I am going to mention is that when I met him, he was like 44, he's a few years younger than me. He was like 44, almost 45, and he had never been married. Now, um, I know that people are marrying later and later in life, and that is not, there's no like sort of one size would fit all scenario. But looking back on that, that was definitely a red flag, and a red flag you should not ignore. Because again, if these guy, this guy is great, he's got all money, he's got all these things, great job, you know, great family, why isn't he married? Because he didn't want to be, he enjoyed his, his single life. And you know, that's fine, but again, that, and I enjoyed single life, let's get this straight, I, I enjoyed single life, but I, I, I realized that once it got to the point that I was ready to move forward, then that that was not going to happen with him you know I, I just don't think he's a person who will ever be married and um although marriage has never been like you know because i was married and my you know husband passed away i've never been like i gotta get married i gotta get married never get married because like him i am very comfortable being alone and i enjoy my own company but at some point like I've reached a point kind of now where yeah, I would definitely be open to it. And um, I just couldn't see that with him. Like we would be apart for a year. And like, you know, we would text back and forth and then he asked me out to dinner and I'd be like, you know, okay. And we would reconcile for maybe a couple of months and then I'd be like, no. See, I'd spend time with him and I'm like, you know what? This is why I left you in the first place. And that happened, I probably, I'll be honest, like two or three times over the course of five years. But I just decided, like, I'm done. At a certain point, you just have to be done. And I was just done. Like, I am wasting time. And throughout, you know, this process of five years, yeah, I dated other people. But, but when you have had a long-term, like, sort of off and on relationship with someone, and this person has been significant in your life, and you are you know, sort of texting them and just allowing them still to have that footprint in your life, it is difficult to move on. It is, and that's just the truth. And I've discussed that with other, you know, in other videos and, you know, because I know I've experienced it. I mean, that's just telling it like it is. So, I, about three years ago, I decided, you know what, I'm gonna block him. Because I'm the type of person that, and this is why also I know that there is, you know, we have this emotional connection, this soul type. I'm the type of person that, you know, when I'm done, I'm done. And he is the only person that, you know, I just, like, for whatever reason, couldn't shake. You know, I didn't see him. I really had no real desire to see him. But I knew he wanted to see me. So about three years ago, I decided to, you know what, I'm going to block him. I'm gonna block him, maybe two years ago. No, it's probably like two years ago. I'm gonna block him. And what prompted that is, um, I think he was at some sort of work event and um, he sent me a picture, I think at a baseball game with him sitting next to this, this girl. And I'm like, huh. I mean, like, like I mean, are you, are, is this supposed to make me jealous or something? But you know what, I, I didn't respond. I did not respond. I waited a couple of days, you know, because I mean, not that I felt a type of way about it, but it was like, how petty can you be? You know, you're, you're, you're trying to get at me and, and you can't. Um, so I waited a couple of days and I did text him back and I said this, I don't know if you're dating this person and I don't care, but I, I pity her. I really do because there is nothing worse for a woman than being with a man who wants someone else, okay? That's what I said to him and I blocked him. That was it. Like I said, this about two years ago. That was it, I blocked him, no more friendly texts, nothing. Um, but there is that part of me that, like I know he wants me back. As I said in the live today, 
if I call him or text him right now, or text him back right now, because he texted me last night, I mean, he would be down in a minute. He would totally want to get back with me because I am someone he loves, I am someone he cares about, and I am someone, I am the one that got away. However, when it comes to soul ties, even though I've moved on, even though I have no desire to be with this person, because there was no traumatic event, like, you know, uh, you know, he cheated on me, I cheated on him, or just, there was nothing necessarily bad that happened. I think that the relationship has always felt sort of unresolved, and that's why it sort of has always lingered. But this is a person who is, as much as he cares about me, either unable or unwilling to give me what I want at the end of the day. But high value is relative, right? And he is only a high value man if ultimately he and you are on the same page. But I still know in truth that I do have some sort of emotional connection with him because, you guys, he still texts me. Even though I have his number blocked, he still texts me just like he did last night. And you guys... I'm telling you, you can call me crazy, but I can feel it. Whenever he texts me and I have that number block, I can feel it. So I just went to sleep and you know, I woke up this morning, got my stuff together. Um, I had my live at three o'clock. So I uh, you know, totally forgot about it. And then about around one o'clock, I'm like, huh, that's right. That's right, so I'm like, let me check. So I went to my block messages and looked, and sure as hell, he had texted me. I miss you, sent me a couple pictures of himself, and I'm like, I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. And it's uncanny, you guys. It almost freaks me out, but I mean, it's not like he texts me every day or even every week, but whenever he does, I can just sense it. That is evidence of a soul type. The other evidence of a soul tie is what? The fact that I am checking for his message from time to time, right? For me, part of it, and I'll be honest, you guys, is the fact that I, I enjoy the fact that he wants me and he's never going to get me back. I like that, and you can call him in if you want to. We are not together because you could not give me the things... I required in a relationship therefore you do not get me and because of the boundaries that I set and because I am sticking firm to those boundaries the you know soul tie in him is extremely strong and remains so because a the rejection and the ego of you know wanting someone who could have you but chooses not to and he's a leo too you guys so you know if you believe in that sort of thing think about that but i think there's a respect there a man respects a woman with boundaries he respects a woman with standards that's the thing and part of his deep soul tie to me is derived from that the fact that I, I, if he, I could be with him right now, but I'm not with him because I choose not to be. And I know that no matter who he meets going forward, I will always be the one for him. And that's not cocky. That is the truth. That's something he has told me. But as I said, a person, you cannot change a person, right? And whatever, you know, emotional, you know, limitations or uh, scar tissues they have is for them to work out, not for you. And, you know, you, you, just, you cannot waste your time on someone who is, once again, unable or unwilling to give you what you require. So how do you break a soul tie? There is, again, this person I have, this this emotional connection but this has not in, impeded my ability to date and move on at all not anymore maybe maybe two or three years ago i would say it did but not now i don't have one foot in and one foot out i'm out but how do you break a soul tie how do you break that emotional connection with someone 
And the answer is to create distance in terms of communication. No communication. Do not see him. Do not talk to him. Do not text him. Because you cannot move forward if you keep coming back. You just can't do it. You might have to, you know, cut loose or distance yourself from some friends the two of you had in common. You will certainly have to stop going to the places you guys used to go together. Because, you know, be honest with yourself, in the back of your mind, you may be going because you know or you think he's going to be there. Now, when your soul tie, your emotional connection is with a man with whom you have children, that is when you have to have the most resolve because you have to have contact with this man. Um, this man, uh, you, I mean, just, just by virtue of having children with this man reminds you every day of him. The key to breaking that soul tie is that you have to commit to treating your ex like an ex. When he comes over to get the kids, if he comes inside your house, you know, make, first of all, make sure your kids are ready. Don't have them lingering. You know, grab your, you know, oh, get their backpacks or whatever the thing's ready. He comes to you. If you invite him in, do not let him sit down. Oh, the kids will be ready in a minute. Don't, do not invite him to sit down. Have the kids come on out and, you know, say goodbye, kiss your kids, give them whatever they need, and open the door for them, have fun, and that's it. Do not allow that man to sit down on your couch or whatever. Do not be inviting of him do not be rude obviously be cordial but do you have to this man is your ex and if you have those thoughts and those strong feelings about him you have to create a barrier so you can get past them even better is to have him call you or even text you when he gets to your driveway or whatever you know, when he's parked out on the curb, hey, I'm here, and then send the kids down or, you know, walk out down with the kids, make sure they get in the car and, you know, maybe wave to them and make sure they're all good, discuss, hey, I'll bring them back on Sunday at, Sunday at five, cool, and, you know, you know, send him on his way. Keep the contact minimal, keep it about the children, and that's it. You have to treat your ex like an ex particularly if you have children with him, which is a permanent, not only soul tie, a permanent tie. Recognizing and accepting a soul tie, this emotional connection is so important. Like everything else in life, you cannot change what you won't acknowledge. Do not allow pride and denial to rob you of years of your life. You also have to keep in mind that if you meet someone else, a good man, and you start dating them, if this man feels you are not over your ex, obviously that's going to be a problem and that is going to jeopardize what could be a good relationship. As I said, with this person, I was dating when he sent me that picture. There's nothing worse than being with somebody who wants to be with somebody else. You know, if you were a have not and you want to go from a have not to a have, if you are a person who like me was not emotionally fulfilled by this person, keep that in mind and keep that at the forefront of your mind. Why aren't you with this person in the first place? Do whatever you have to do to distance yourself from that person with whom you have an emotional connection. And I do not mean sleeping around with other guys because unfortunately a lot of women do that and that just creates more soul ties and it doesn't, you know, I don't, I don't think it resolves the problem anyway because you're doing it almost to be vindictive. The relationship with this person with whom you have the soul tie is the motivator for your having you know, these relations with other men. Soul ties are real. 
soul ties can be challenging to break and we have to acknowledge that. But we have to commit to breaking them because that is the only way we can move forward and have the lives that we, we truly want that we didn't have or couldn't have with the person with whom we had the tie. Because let's face it guys, if he was everything you wanted, if he was the high value man that you needed and deserved, you would still be with him, right? So you guys, that's it. I look forward, forward, forward to your comments below. Uh, feel free to share your stories with me as I've shared with you. I'm so glad this, this topic came up on our live. You guys, I look forward to doing a lot of uh, another live. We had so much fun. Please do not forget to follow me on Instagram and Twitter. And um, again, subscribe to both of my channels, the Come Up Straight Up, as well as Pretty and Things. So until next time, you guys. Mwah.